I'm a little excited that uh, we've taken religiosity and now added the uh, website as well as the material from, I can't even think of what it's called now, Techno Thinknology. There we go, Thinknology. It's like, wow, perfect. Thinknology, religiosity. Now, if we could med med if we could merge the two and people could start to think, we would accomplish everything that we really want to do. You see, the problem that we had and why we started religiosity was because there are so many religious ideas out there that are false. <laughs> I mean, I have a list that goes on and on and on and on. Da, 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 da. But no, really, it's a long list, and I've been checking it twice to make sure who's not and nice. No, the, the, it's almost humorous, the hubris of it all. If I could quote somebody else that's on the radio right now that's in trouble, is that it's almost like a, oh, what do they call that? Uh, well, anyways, getting all excited about nothing. Because what happens in religiosity is that we bring to you the factual data that we can find on the internet. And then we talk about it. We say, look, this is, this is what the facts are. You can look it up the same place I did. You can do the same things that I'm saying to you. You can find out for yourself and prove how ridiculously absurd whoever it was that you were listening to or read it from is about whatever it was that you thought that you needed to be worried about. And we've already dealt with a few subjects. Now we're going to talk about Chrislam. <laughs> well, actually, we're going to talk about Chrislam, Mormonanity, um, Judy Sanity, you know, Judy Sanity, you know, the idea that Judaism is becoming Christianity and that somehow they're merging the two, you know, not Messianic, no, we're not talking about that, we're talking about a Jewish kind of like, you know, keeping the law, you know, so that the Seventh-day Adventists can feel happy about being now Jewish because that's what they want to be anyways, because that's what they sort of claimed at one time, and so they're now part of the new Judianity. They're Judaism and Christianity merged, and you know Mormonanity, I mean Mormonanity or Mormon, let's see, what do we call it, Christian Mormon or whatever, but anyways, that's the, you know, the idea that the Mormons say they're Christian, so you know, we're going to merge the two and come up with that word, because after all, that's what we did with Chrislam, isn't it? One guy, one place, at one time in Africa said, hey, I'm a Muslim, you know, and I want to, I want to get some money from the Christians. You know, like the Christians do, but I can't do it if I'm a Muslim. So maybe if I merge the two, I can get the money like Christians do, and I can be a Muslim too. Not exactly what he did, but you research a little bit on there, and you may find that's almost close. But there was supposedly a prophet that came up, and he wanted to start a new Islam. You know, a new sect, kind of like what the Mormons did. They wanted to start a new sect of Christianity. So the prophet pops up, Joseph Smith writes a book, you know, or finds one, and it says, hey, I got a new religion. <laughs> only he says, he's the only religion that's true. Kind of like what Prislam's prophet did in the beginning. Now, he couldn't get that many followers, because, you see, part of the problem is Islam, in an Islamic country, makes sense. It's very conservative, it's very, you know, set up in a certain way, and they run a certain rule of law which people right now are panicking over, you know, Sharia law, which is just like having Jewish law, because frankly, Jews in Orthodox communities don't obey the civil law, they obey the religious law. The Hasidic culture is famous for that. It's like, hey, you know what, you got your laws, we got our laws, we're doing by our laws. And so nobody gets upset about the Jews doing it, but they're all terrified. All oh, those, 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 those Muslims are, are, are wanting to change our laws into Sharia law. No, they're saying, your moral law sucks. You guys believe in abortion, you believe in all this stuff that the majority of you vote for, and you think that that's wonderful, and we're saying, in our religion, that sucks. So they say they want to have their moral law in effect. So you see, religiosity is taking this intolerance from Puritanism and said, oh, God help us, Sharia law is coming. And so they make up all these rules and regulations and fights and battles and 
terminologies and things about how, oh no, some religious fanatic, you know, killed his daughter because, you know, she didn't obey whatever. You know. <laughs> Frankly, if you took it to, you know, our side of the coin too, on the Christian side, there seems to be a balance there, but we won't go there too far. The point is things are blown out of proportion. We call it histrionics. When you put on a hissy fit, you know, because you think, oh God, we got to do something. <laughs> you know, and shock radio came out of histrionics, trying to shock you into something to believe in that you absolutely, if you had any kind of technology going on, would not have thought of yourself, would not have believed in the first place, and common sense would have told you it's false. But some people are going to push it. So, because we have in an information age the bombardment of information, not just what we were worried about like in the 60s with, you know, like billboards full of these naked women and all that kind of subliminal advertising that was going on in the ice cubes, you know, and the liquor, you know, and all this kind of stuff that was being kind of like advertisers figured out how to manipulate you. Well, you know, religious people have figured out how to manipulate you too. You see, that's why we call it religiosity, because religious people now are manipulating you. And you're being manipulated. You know, man manipulated or man I whole aided. Man one man or I, man I is pulling you and <laughs> pulling you, basically, and then aided. You know, it's aided into an identification of a process with which you are being led into a fallacy that causes you to go in the wrong direction, believing in something that the I of man pulls you into, and it's aided by taking in too much information. So, the manipulation process is kind of like identifiable if you understood process. You know, like in corporate business, you know, the process, how things work, you know, they go from you know, like say a sales order, you know, there's the generate the order and the purchase order and then the sales order and then the, you know, the taxes, you know, and this and that and the other thing and then the shipping, you know, and the, all that, delivery and, you know, receipt and customer satisfaction and follow up and all that stuff. But, you know, you have all these process charts. Same thing works in the mind, same thing works in your heart, same thing works in the soul, same thing works in scripture. So, when people want to manipulate the process, we got religiosity and that's why we do it so that you won't be manipulated, but that you will have informed technology, informed choice. You will make, on the one hand, see what technology is doing, on the other hand, see what thinking can do for you, and then apply the two principles together so that you make a positive choice to do and to allow in your life only the things that you can prove are perfect and acceptable of God in Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the perfect acceptable will of God in Christ Jesus. If you know the scriptures, you couldn't even possibly believe in Chris Long. There is no way that Christianity, in any way, shape, or form, embraces Islam. And, no offense, but if you knew even a few Muslims, you know that they'd laugh you out of their temp temple. I mean, they'll laugh you out of their I can't even think what it's called. It shows you where I'm at. It's so dumb. Anyways, they would laugh you off of your prayer shawl, you know, or off your, their prayer, prayer rug. They would laugh you out of America because the whole idea of Chrislam is only propagated by Christians. Funny how that works. There isn't one Muslim out there that says, hey, you know what? Come and, you know, talk to my imam, you know, and he'll tell you all about Chrislam. He'll tell you, <laughs> you've been smoking dope? You know, I mean, that's basically what he's going to do. He's going to look at you like another American. Only in America would they believe this stuff. They got Santa Claus, they got Tooth Fairies, they got Wizard of Oz, and they got Chris Long. I mean, how crazy does it get when you start believing dumb things that you could research on the Internet? You look up Google to begin with, and you put in the word Chris Long, and it says, here's Chris Long. Started in Africa, 500 people, rumored that some church was going to supposedly become part of Islam and that it was going to somehow infect with their theology the entire Christian world and convert them to a new kind of Islam. <laughs> really? That's as bad as walking into McDonald's and telling me that I'm going to be converted into a burger because I went into McDonald's and I'm going to get caught up in the Ronald McDonald 
thoughts. And I'll start wearing a clown outfit and walking around brainwashed. Please, give me a break. How dumb have we become? And that's a question. How dumb have we become? Think about it. Islam is impossible. First of all, you got Muslims who are killing anybody that even begins to touch the Koran, much less say Muhammad was a false prophet or anything else, and they go after Rushdie for printing, you know, the Satan principles or Satan chronicles, you know, talked about how, you know, that basically, you know, it was kind of all made up. And so, you got him under death threat, you know, and he, who knows if he's going to live or die. <laughs> They're still after him. But, you think somebody's going to, like, allow this idea of Chris on the go on? Only Christians are propagating it to label you or label someone they don't like as a heretic. Because that's kind of what happened in the Salem Witch Trials. You see, the pilgrims had come over and they said, oh, well, we want our own form of Puritanism. We don't want that, you know, kind of Puritanism that was going on in Europe. You know, they were doing it by the Bible, so we want our own version of it. We want our own Bible and our own version. So it's kind of like, okay. So they came over to America and, you know, Plymouth and, you know, the story. You know, they got together and they were kind of like, you know, everything was hunky-dory. And then they were all together. And then all of a sudden some of them started dying off, you know, and then some of them started having... And as you've seen these Discovery Channel things, they found out that, you know what, there was some play going on. There was a little bit of poisoning going on. There was a little bit of accidental stuff going on. But suddenly it was like, there are witches in the land. Witches, witches. So they went on a witch hunt. And as we've seen in most of the documentaries, 90% of the people they killed were innocent. Witch trials. What are we doing? We have our Muslim trials. You're a Muslim. You're a Muslim lover. Oh, you know, never mind that you went in there to witness. Never mind that you're always saying Jesus loves you and Jesus, you know, you're preaching Jesus and the Son of God, you know, that there's only one God and that He's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, never mind that you're using the Bible only, and never mind that you know, you've been witnessing to all along, you know, all these thousands of people getting saved. Never mind the proof is already out there, and that all we have to do is ask you, we want to label you, Rick Warren, as though you were the leader of Prism. Really? Histrionics. Do you really believe in Chrislam? I mean, after they labeled Rick Warren, Islam, and then tried to push it even more so into prophecy, and now some prophecy sites have gone on the bandwagon, suddenly pastors started standing up and saying, bull! Suddenly people started going on to Google and looking it up and saying, what? Suddenly people started using their own version of any kind of search engines and started looking at the facts and said, are you kidding me? Where do we get this stuff? And suddenly... People were admitting, you know, it's not so bad to admit you're wrong when you have the truth to set you free. Because, you see, Jesus didn't come out and say, hey, look, Romans, I know you got Eros, and I know you got the Roman gods, and then you got also the, the uh, Greek gods, you know, and you got the unknown god and all these gods, you know. He says, you know, but I want you to treat me as the son of God, you know, now, and accept me as I am, you know, and I want your theology to be correct before you even come to me. When that centurion, you know, came to Jesus, he wasn't looking for, you know, like the son of God. He was looking for somebody who had authority and who had the ability to do what he wanted done. So when he came to Jesus, he said, look, you don't have to come to my house because I know you're a Jew, you know, and I understand that, you know, it's okay. But I have a favorite servant, you know, that, you know, I... I I really just want him healed, you know, because he's really a good man, you know, and he loves the Lord, you know, he loves you, and following God, you know, he's a good worker, you know, he does his job. And so Jesus says, okay, well, I'll come to your house. He said, no, 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 I'm, I'm like you, I'm a man under authority. I understand, if you say the word, it'll be done. I trust you, you know, just tell me, and it'll be done. And Jesus commended him for his faith. Imagine that. What kind of faith do you got? You got faith in Jesus? Do you have faith in Christianity? Do you have faith in God? Or do you have faith in man? Because this Chrislam stuff is stupid. So why are you putting your faith in rumors, innuendos, inaccurate statements, false doctrines, false beliefs, false sites telling you things that aren't in scriptures anywhere, and then you're buying into it and accusing brethren 
who frankly are saved and have been doing salvations among Muslims. What's your problem? Are you brainwashed? So you see, Chrislam is stupid because it took your prejudice and it led you by the nose right down that trail. Because if you bought into Chrislam as being true or accurate, no offense, the only reason you bought into it was because you already had a prejudice there. You already had something in your heart that said, I don't know what the Muslims believe, but I'm going to believe, you know, that I, if I read the Koran, I'll understand it, you know, because I'm going to see that they are out killing people all the time. Throughout the world, they have always killed people everywhere they go. Really? Please, give me a break. Before Al-Qaeda, we had Black Panthers, we had Malcolm X, we had all these people that were Muslims wandering around in America, doing the American Muslim thing, and not a problem too much, you know, some rioting, some of this, some of that, you know, but kind of the normal stuff, kind of like, you know, Timothy McVeigh, you know, kind of like, you know, wackos, you know, are in every group, so, you know, some wackos here, some wackos there, wackos come from everywhere, you know, I mean, that's the way wackos are, you know, they go wacko. So, you know, kind of like, nobody went off on this whole idea of, you know, Muslims are bad people before 9-11, but now, just like, it had been said, the fear would change our lifestyle and we would lose something along the way. Except for the Christian shouldn't be that way. You see, I can understand people who don't know any better falling into Islam and believing that, you know, somehow this little tiny, tiny word, you know, that started in Africa and came over to the States, you know, and somehow was picked up by websites and bloggers and prophecy sites and ran with, you know, and warnings of this, that, and the other thing to get your attention so that you'll kind of like, you know, seek God or maybe seek them or follow whatever teaching is out there. And there are some very famous pastors and teachers using that word and frankly, they didn't do their research. <laughs> what can I say? Do your research and find out. But there's no churches doing it. I mean, you know, maybe a Lutheran, no Lutheran, maybe a, United, a Church of Christ somewhere that might have gotten off on a tangent you might be trying to do something, you know, to use it, to get some membership. But when it was last surveyed, they found, I think it was, what was it, 200 members in America that they could certify as Chrislam. And they really couldn't put anything solid together because there were like maybe 50 churches that they said somehow in some way might be identified with Chrislam. And of that 50, then it would be about 200 members, which makes it a pretty small amount of people because some of the churches really weren't that much into it. And the people that were in the church really didn't understand what was going on. So you really have this ridiculously minutai number that somehow has gotten blown out of proportion. And I don't really understand how people are still believing it, except for maybe you want to be an Archie Bunker. Maybe you want to be... Edith Head, you know, Archie Bunker's wife. Because, you see, Archie Bunker had all these prejudices. And he called his son a meathead, you know. And he had all these opinions about everything in the world. Now, none of his opinions were factual. They were all based on bias and prejudices that he grew up with. And so, it was put on TV to show, in a humorous way, how prejudicial and biased people are. Only that wasn't that long ago. And the funny thing is, people still are biased and prejudicial, even after they get saved. The problem is, is that, like Edith Head, she would stumble into the truth and begin to say something to Archie and contradict him, and he wouldn't like it. He'd say, no, 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 you know, and he'd just treat her like she was some dumb person. But whenever she found something true, she always made her point. Kind of interesting. When we look at what Jesus said, we have a factual based reality that Jesus knows, Jesus is able to deal with, and Jesus is able to lead us in. When we look at mankind, when they start talking about Chrism, it's almost as though, you know, you're going to get like, you know, infected somehow, you know, with this viral change that's going to come upon you and completely warp your mind, you know, so that you're going to 
buy into some kind of false doctrine and theology. I don't know how to tell you this, but in religiosity, we have a different point of view. We believe God is able. You see, first of all, we believe that God is real. And a lot of Christians don't. We believe that God intervenes in a person's life, and a lot of Christians don't. We believe that God is able to reveal the truth, as he said he would, in the Bible. And that we don't have to just read the Bible, but that we can have God speak to us. And God can work through circumstance, through the Word of God, through the pastor, through the teacher, through the elder, through Google, through any number of means that he wants to. Even a Balaam donkey like a jackass that could speak, and God could do that. So, we have a different attitude here at religiosity. We don't believe in the fallacy and the false, because we ask God first before we make a video. We ask God first before we make a tape. We ask God to show us, to reveal to us the truth of what Chrislam is before we even bother to talk to you about it. So the question I have for you is, in religiosity, if you want to be religious, what are you doing about it? Are you being a false prophet and really setting yourself up for a fall? Are you being kind of like, you know, stumbled by someone and you're kind of like, you know, participating in that sin because you've already bore false witness against some of the brethren, you know, and you accuse them of things that aren't true. If you've gotten into Chrislam and you've posted that, if you pushed that, if you believed in it, then you believed in the spirit of a lie. And Jesus warned about that. And that's why we have religiosity. We want technology to take place of your mind. That you would start to think about getting caught up in the spirit of a lie. Because the spirit of Antichrist is in the world now. It says the spirit of antichrists have gone out into the world. We're also warned that in the latter days there would be the spirit of a lie that they would not believe the truth, but they would believe in error. Now, I know that when you read it in the Greek, you can see a lot of that being exemplified today because it does say an ongoing thing. It's not like a one-time event. They believe one lie and that's it. It's over with. Now that's been fulfilled. But it's the spirit of error, the spirit of a lie that causes them to error you know, to believe in error, to believe continually in this error that keeps going on. They keep making this same mistake over and over again because of that spirit of Antichrist that's in the world. There is a spirit of Antichrist, which we're going to change that in a minute so you understand what spirit of Antichrist is. There's that spirit of error in the church. Now, here's what Antichrist, the word, means, and that's why religiosity, we try to get into something in our teaching about religious, you know, Truisms. We try to get into a word so you understand it. Anti-Christ. The word comes from ant, uh, false messiah. It really means false messiah. It implies being the opposite of Christ because that's kind of what Satan isn't. He's not the opposite of Christ, so don't get that in there. The Greeks got that confused. The Greek word confuses you by saying anti-Christ because the other one would be Christ, right? No, Satan is not equal with Christ. Sorry. So it's originally from false messiah. What does false messiah mean? The word messiah means anointed one. That means a false anointed one. So when you see in the Greek it says the spirit of antichrist with an S, it means the spirit of falsely anointed ones. In other words, people that have gone out into the Christian body that say they're anointed, that supposedly have the Holy Spirit. You know, like Jesus warned us about. He said, look, when you come to me and you say, have we not done all these things in thy name? Have we not done marvelous works? Have we not cast out demons? Have we not even raised the dead? And he'll say, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So they had the anointing of some spirit. What? I don't know. Looks like the Holy Spirit. Acts like the Holy Spirit. Till we get Jesus saying he doesn't know them, might be the Holy Spirit, because I don't know. But I know this, the spirit of falsely anointed ones is out there. And that also applies to the spirit of error. How do you get caught up into things like that? Because the spirit of error, the spirit of that which leads you aside from
the word of God. If it ain't in here, don't believe it. Chrislam isn't in here. There's no prophecy for it. There's no belief in it. There's no adaptability in it. There's nothing at all that anyone can take a scripture and say, this is where we get a foundation for saying that Chrislam exists and that somehow it's you know like been manifested. No. Now we can take Islam and say, yes, this is a false religion based upon this scripture that says that there would be false messianic types, false Christ or false anointed ones that would come on and preach another gospel or preach another book or preach another way of salvation. And that's what Muhammad did with the Quran is that he came on the scene he knew by way of teaching what the Jews had taught, what Christians had taught. So he saw that his people needed to be unified kind of like the Lawrence of Arabia routine where he unified a lot of the tribal Bedouin, a lot of the tribal Arab uh, Muftis together to fight against the German regime so that they would be unified to possibly in the future get a full country back, but then also during the time work with England in order to beat the German occupation. Lawrence of Arabia managed to unify a lot of that and become a great legend. In the same way, that's what happened with Islam, is that Muhammad came on the scene and unified a lot of religious factions into one conglomerate. Judaism did the same thing. When it became Talmudic, or when it became Rabbinical Judaism, everyone refers to Maimonides. And Maimonides unified or codified a lot of Jewish principles that had been talked about, but put it down in a book. One man, though, so no offense, if he's one guy that kind of unified Jewish religion and thought into a book, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm sorry. One guy? Uh-uh. Man, that makes me just as nervous as, you know, anyone else. Because when one guy does it, I know that one guy could undo it. So, when Jesus came, to me, being a son of God, that was different. And then I see all these other one-man shows being imitations and poor imitations of that. And they always came after him. Do you notice that? So that's what happens when the spirit of Antichrist, false anointed ones, those things have gone out. You can build the foundation of them being a type or typology of them like that. But you can't with Chrislam. It came about and died out. Then it became, let's bring it back and revive it. Kind of what Jehovah's Witnesses tried to do with the Gnostics, you know, tried to say, hey, you know what, we got this kind of Gnostic heresy, you know, let's make Jesus into a spirit, you know, and uh, well, he's just a God, you know, and we, we'll bring that back, you know, and it didn't work. Sorry, you know, they got to keep you brainwashed and busy, otherwise, if you stop to think about it, you wouldn't believe it. So, in Thinkology, we want you to start thinking about it. So that's why we posted beneath the video the very factual, you know, presentation of some material that you could read and research for yourself. We also post the video so that you get somebody's straight up, let's talk. Let's get real. Let's be honest. You know, let's don't mince words here. Let's don't get his, you know, hissy fit and get histrionics about it. Let's don't go off on a tangent you know, and pretend like it's real. Let's call it what it is. False. It's baloney. It's malarkey. We did it to ourselves. We chose to not love our enemies, so we chose to believe a lie that we would not then go to them with the gospel. And that now we're going to them with accusations and trying to demonstrate that we're really what they fear the most about us. Extremists. So get off of the witch hunt, O oh Puritan, and come back to Jesus and let him lead you in the way that you should go to witness to a Muslim. You should be out witnessing the love of God to them, not trying to say that some Christian is a Muslim or that a Muslim is a Christian and kind of blend the two into Chrislam. That's your idea, if you believe in Chrislam, because it never was Chrislam's idea. Chrislam even doesn't say that, but you've been told that. It's like, no, do the homework, do the research, find out what it really was in the beginning, and then find out what your prophecy false post because maybe they're right about something but they're way off base when it came to this maybe they hyped you on this and they you know want you to kind of you know get involved and 
I mean, I even saw it on, you know, no offense, but I think it was Hal Lindsey's site, you know, and I thought, Hal, come on, man, don't fall for it. Don't get trapped with, you know, some of these dumb things that people are buying into, you know, and selling books on. Just because people get involved in it doesn't mean it's real. It's false. It's been false. It's continued to be false. You know, it's kind of like this whole, uh, boy, I don't even know, oh, the Yahushua's and Yahoo's, you know, and they got all carried away about making up new names for Jesus. And they're wrong. I mean, it was just so proven wrong that it was almost ridiculously stupid. But there are still some Pentecostals out running around trying to push it, you know. And they're off base. They've become a cult, and even people in their own denomination are telling them, hey, you know, those guys are cultic, you know. That's what happens. When you don't have enough people, you have to keep inventing stranger, weirder ideas to get people involved in what you're doing. And sadly, that's the spirit of Antichrist. That's the spirit of false anointing. That's causing people to believe a lie and the spirit of a lie and causing them to err from the truth. And the truth is always for you to find out. It's not something that you have to go to your pastor and tell him to find out. It's right here. It's called the Bible. It's a personal relationship between you and God. You are responsible for your salvation between you and God alone. You are responsible for teaching and preaching and reviving that in you, Holy Spirit, that will cause you to be anointed so that you could teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You were called to be able to do that, to give to every man an answer for the hope that lies within you. You are required to know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's why theology is a part of religiosity for us because you are supposed to be doing this according to this. Now, if you ask Jesus, he'll tell you. <laughs> So do it. What's the problem? Just do it. Don't get confused and get into, ooh, let's go see if we could find another boogeyman. You know, like the latest asteroid. It's coming close to the Earth. Oh, no. We live in the last days. Deal with it. We're in the last generation. So what? Doesn't mean you lose your cookies. Doesn't mean you get histrionics and go, it's Chris Long. Chris Long is coming. Chris Long is coming. Chris Long is coming. Sharia law is coming. Sharia, Sharia, Sharia. Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord. Chris Long is false. Bottom line. You can prove it. You don't want to Google? Use Bing. <laughs> Do you want to use Bing? Get off of... No offense. Get off of following men. Follow God. He'll tell you. Follow the scriptures. It will tell you. You go anywhere but listen to what men say and you're going to believe in Chris on because people will hype you and deceive you. Because you won't find it in the Bible. You won't find it in scripture and you won't find it in prophecy. That ought to tell you it's false to begin with. So because you can't find it there, or even anything that even comes close to it, that ought to have been your first indicator that it's false. So just like Santa Claus, just like the Tooth Fairy, just like the boogeyman under the bed, it's time to put Chrislam to sleep permanently. It's false. It ain't going nowhere. It's going to die out just as soon as you let it go.